Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and I am one of the contributing editors over at Book Riot. I am back to do another new release Tuesday video. Today I'm talking about books that come out on Tuesday, January 23rd. The first book I'm going to talk about is Frankenstein in Baghdad by Ahmed Sadawi. From the rubble strewn streets of US occupied Baghdad, Haiti a scavenger and an oddball fixture at the local cafe collects human body parts and stitches them together to make his own corpse. His goal, he claims is to get the government to recognize these parts as human in order to give them sort of a proper burial. But when the corpse goes missing and a wave of eerie murders sweeps the city, reports stream in of a horrendous looking criminal who, though shot, cannot be killed. Haiti soon realizes that he's created a monster, one that needs human flesh in order to survive, first from the guilty and then just from anyone in his path. This book has won a number of prizes already, including the International Prize for Arabic Fiction. And this book works to capture, with white knuckle horror and black humor, the surreal reality of contemporary Iraq. And again, that's called Frankenstein in Baghdad. Next up, I have our sponsor for this video, and that is Sisters Like Us by Susan Mallory. Divorce left Harper Szymanski with a name no one can spell, a house she can't afford, and a teenage daughter who's pulling away. She's scrambling to maintain her overbearing mother's high standards while also paying the bills. Dr. Stacy Bloom spent half her life in school, but it didn't prepare her at all for motherhood. Her mother will be horrified to find out that Stacy's husband plans to be a stay-at-home dad, assuming that Stacy can find the courage to tell her mom that she's pregnant. Separately, they might be a mess, but together Harper and Stacy can survive anything. Susan Mallory is a New York Times best-selling author, and she is back with a novel that talks about mothers and daughters and sisters in today's fast-paced world told with her trademark humor and warmth. And again, that's Sisters Like Us, and thanks again to them for sponsoring this video. Next up, I have Let's Talk About Love by Claire Can. Alice had her whole summer planned. Non-stop all-you-can-eat buffets while marathoning her favorite TV shows with the smallest dash of adulting, which is working at the library in order to pay the rent. The only thing missing from her perfect plan is her girlfriend, who broke up with her after Alice confessed that she was asexual. So Alice decides that she is done with dating. But then Alice meets Takumi and she can't get over the rom-com level feelings that she's having that she definitely did not ask for. When her blissful summer takes an unexpected turn and Takumi becomes her knight with a shiny library employee badge, Alice has to decide if she's willing to risk her friendship for a love that may not be reciprocated or understood. This is a contemporary young adult book that obviously deals with diverse voices in a really great way. It also has an amazing cover. So if you are looking for a contemporary young adult book that has a slightly different angle to it, then pick up Let's Talk About Love. Next up, I have The Deepest Well, Healing the Long-Term Effects of Childhood Adversity, and this is a nonfiction book by Nadine Burke Harris. Dr. Nadine Burke Harris was already known as a crusading physician delivering targeted care to vulnerable children. But it was Diego who stopped growing after a sexual trauma, who forced her to dig deeper and look into the connections between significant trauma, toxic stress, and the lifelong illnesses she was tracking in so many of her patients and their families. After surveying tens of thousands of adults, who had experienced various different types of childhood traumas, whether it be divorce, substance abuse, or neglect, um, the higher their sort of score on this scale, the worse off their health, health was. So in this book, Dr. Harris is going to explore basically what she's found in terms of the correlation between childhood trauma and the impact that it has on the health of a human being. I imagine that this is going to be a book that's going to be a little bit difficult to read because of the topics that it's going to talk about, but I think ultimately it's going to be a really important read in seeing sort of the correlation between these events and sort of what we can do in order to help people who have been through trauma. And again, that book is called The Deepest Well. Next up, I have The Other Side of Everything by Lauren Doyle Owens. This is a suspenseful literary debut, and this author is getting comparisons to 
both Megan Abbott and Laura Lippman. Bernard White is a curmudgeonly widower who has lived in Seven Springs, Florida for decades and has kept to himself since his wife passed. When his neighbor is murdered, he emerges from his solitude to connect with the other people in his neighborhood. These connections become a literal lifeline as a second and then a third elderly person is murdered. And the originals, as they call themselves, realize that they're being targeted. Amy is an artist and a cancer survivor whose emotional recovery has not been as strong as her physical one. After the woman next door is murdered, she begins painting scenes of the murder in order to cope with her loss. But when her paintings turn out to be a little bit too accurate, the neighbors become suspicious and she ends up in the crosshairs of the police. And then there is Maddie Lowe, a teenage waitress whose mother recently abandoned the family. As Maddie struggles to keep her family together and maintain the appearance of a relatively normal teenage life, she finds herself drawn to the man that the police is saying is the suspect for these crimes. As they navigate their increasingly dangerous worlds, Bernard, Amy, and Maddie begin to uncover the connections between them, as well as the past and the present. In a novel that looks to explore how tragedy can ultimately spark renewal. And again, that book is called The Other Side of Everything. And the final book I'm going to talk about is The King of Bones and Ashes by J.D. Horn. Magic is seeping out of the world, leaving the witches who have depended on it for centuries increasingly hopeless. While some see an inevitable end of their era, others are courting madness, willing to sacrifice former allies, friends, and family to retain this power that they covet. While the other witches watch their reality unravel. Young Alice is using magic's waning days to look into the disappearance of several people in occult circles in New Orleans. Alice disappeared once too, caged in an asylum by blood relatives. Recently freed, she worries that her family might be more involved in the current disappearances than she wants to believe. Yet the more she seeks the truth about her family's troubled history, the more she realizes that her already fragile psyche may be at risk. Discovering the cause of these vanishings, though, could be the only way to escape her mother's reach and determine the outcome for these witches. This book is being described as a fantasy horror type book. It sounds really creepy but also really intriguing. And again, that's called The King of Bones and Ashes. So those are all of the books I'm going to go over in this video. Feel free to leave a comment down below letting me know if you are interested in picking up any of these or if there's another book out today that you are very excited about. Otherwise, I will see you guys again next Tuesday with another new release video. Bye!